Welcome back to the TV Water Cooler Podcast. In this episode, we'll be chatting exclusively with the Bold and the Beautiful star, Delon Demetz. The actor shares with us his perspective on the controversial evening that his character Zende had with Luna after she accidentally ate her mother's hallucinogenic mints. Yep, that happened. Uh, we'll also discuss what it was like booking the role during a pandemic and what it's like getting advice from some of his co-stars and who he'd love to share more screen time with. Let's uh, let's dive right in. Um, it's not really the best time, I guess, for Zende right now. Um, having slept with Luna while she was under the influence of drugs, that in itself, I think, would would make anyone nervous. Uh, how did you approach that? And what were your initial thoughts and concerns about, you know, taking on the story when it was revealed to you? I knew that it was going to be a lightning rod for drama and for conversation. And this is a soap opera. I think that is part of the gig. What I wanted to make sure is that I played it as honestly as possible. And I hope that's what I was able to achieve with Lisa. And a few of my friends watched and commented and they they said, this doesn't, they basically said, this doesn't look like a soap. This looks like a drama. This looks like primetime drama, independent film drama. You're playing it very, very real. And that's what I hope I achieved. Again, my friends are always probably a bit nicer to me than the general community. But I hope that's what the viewers got too. I think Zende definitely feels an array of emotions after the fact. There is guilt for not realizing what happened. He was drinking all night. He stumbles in after glasses and glasses of champagne and sees Luna in his bed after he invited her to be there. So from Zende's perspective, he's there thinking, oh, this is, I, I did not expect her to be here. I was flirting a little bit at the party. She actually came, maybe she's changed her mind. Maybe she's gone over the hill. And then for him to be leveled with, hold on a second, what am I doing here? That as in, in character and as a person, how, 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 do, how do you register that? How do you, how do you deal with it? The, the, knowing then that she thought you were someone else, knowing that she does not feel for you in the way that you thought she had, that maybe she decided to, hey, come over, um, let, let's let's go with this. And then everything that might ensue afterwards. And I think you see that there's one scene we played where Zende has a private moment in his room on the bed reflecting on the night. And I think there's a wash of emotions and fear of what might happen. What is his standing in relationship with the family? Are there legal implications? There are a lot of things. What, what is it like, like for him in that situation? So I, I many, many things to play. As an actor, I knew it was a challenge. I definitely had some trepidation reading. I'm thinking, oh, geez, this is, we're getting heavy real quick. I thought this was going to be a nice little love triangle I win her over somehow and no, we're, we're going there and it went there. And again, as an actor, my job is to play it as sincerely as possible. And I hope I executed that. No. Yeah. The guilt was definitely there. And then where does the blame lie? Like, I don't know. Is there it's a good question. Yeah. I think it's a very good question because uh, clearly Zende has no affinity for RJ whatsoever. Uh, I, I don't believe that Zende is trying to take Luna just as retribution for RJ taking his job. That's all that's going on. Luna's cool. Yeah. Then they yeah. like Luna. Luna's very, very pretty. She's great at the firm. And they've been able to bond during and through the aftermath of Eric's illness. You have that there. That is established. So I don't think that is the line. Zende is not some kind of villain where he's like, I'm going to get back at you by stealing your girlfriend. That's not what's up. He just happens to really like her. And doesn't happen to like him whatsoever. So I think those two things have to be divorced. And uh, then when when you get to it, he's drinking. She's high on these these mints. We keep hearing about these mints, right? And again, 20-something-year-old guy comes in, sees her in his bed after he invited her to his bed. And she says, I've been waiting for you. How do you assign blame? How do you assign blame to any of the parties involved? And then even the mints lying around... I, this is just, it's a series of unfortunate events. It's a, I think yeah. it's a series of unfortunate events. Uh, will you ever take a mint again the same way? 
I, I'm not uh, prone to taking them in, in the first place. I'm more of a dentine ice chewer. And no, seriously, though, I think anytime I see a mint for the rest of my life, I will remember this arc. Right. Now, would, was it fair for Zende to ask Luna to leave RJ over just what happened like that? He kind of like, come on, you can leave him now. I think Zende is kind of pot committed at this point. <laughs> there's no there's no going back. There's no going back. Zende does have feelings for Luna. Zende's feelings for Luna, I believe, were accelerated by the evening they spent together. And he's going to take the shot. What happens after, we'll, we'll see how things play out, but Zende will take the shot. Is it the most eloquent thing to do? Is it the, t is it the correct timing of it? These are up for debate. These are up for day, but you have to remember that Zende has been, emotions are super high. Stakes are really high. All of these feelings are coming out and maybe he is not in the best place to be able to navigate them with a clear mind. So I'll, I'll, I'll say that, but again, sure. Maybe, maybe he could have waited a little bit before making a, a second attempt. <laughs> But he doubles well, down. He's he's in. He he doubles down. He's in. They, they, they wanted to make it clear that he's he's in. He's in for her. He's in. Yeah. Um, right. And it's not just an RJ thing. And Zendi's relationship with his grandfather is really sweet. And um, it's just the chemistry between you both. Would Zende kind of you know confide in Eric what's happened down the line? Do, do you see that happening? Zende has that closeness. I think it is possible. I love working with John too. I love being able to, from, I think my, my first day, my first scene, I think was with Carter, but my first day on set, John pulled me aside and we worked through the scenes together and he gave me a taste of what it was like working on the show. So I, I always love working with him both for the nostalgia, but also because I really respect him as an actor and, and I like his presence on stage. I think the, the relationship is there. That said, for this to break out in the family so close, what does that do? And again, I think this is part of the emotional toll on Zende. What is going to happen? What did I do? What will happen? These are all the questions flitting about. So if he does decide to share that information with John or with anyone else, then with Eric or anyone else, I think it will be a, a very heavy decision and something that he does not take lightly. Because the fallout, it could be catastrophic. There's no right. end to the potential fallout. Um, but that rivalry, or do you think Zende is worried that if he does confide in Eric, who will Eric, you know, side with? Would he side with RJ? Because he's, you know, the golden boy. He's the son of the super couple. And I, I think that is definitely part of it. We had this nice moment where Eric does tell Zende listen, I, I want to work with you. I want, you are, you are wanted. So I, I think that assuages his fear a little bit that he's being pushed out of, of the family. That said, even if you remove the whole, the night together, Zende has been pursuing RJ's girlfriend for quite some time now in not such a hidden manner. He's very flirty. He invited her to dinner, all of, all of that kind of stuff. If that broke out already, it might he might deserve a talking to. So when you stack this on top of it, I don't know. Even if it's hey, this we, no one's really at fault here. Everyone was drunk. Everyone was high. It's a little bit of a cloudy situation for Zendi to keep pursuing in this manner. I think that I, it's it's hard to see too many people having his side. And then again, when you stack on these exacerbated circumstances, it just looks worse and worse. So I think. For, for him to deliver the news, that is, it's a big risk. I don't know where Eric would fall. Okay. Now this, um, Luna got over her trauma pretty quickly and hopped into bed with RJ. It's a soap. Would, if they went there with a who's the daddy, I know Zende made it very clear that they use production, but it is yeah. a soap again. It is a soap. What would Zende's approach to fatherhood be from your perspective? I think Zende <laughs> probably be very happy about the situation. Zende's he's he said this before with Paris. Yeah, uh, he said this with Zoe. 
He's been around. He's he's been around the block. He's lived internationally. He's been married. He's had a failed marriage. I could see Zende being in a position where he might want something very true that could lead to something like that. Now, under normal circumstances, one would hope that this would unfold over a long period of time, but that's not what we're dealing with. This is a soap. Things are truncated. Zende coming out right after that incident and saying, dump him, be with me. The timeline is questionable there. Luna getting right back into bed with RJ after there's also timeline, but this is television and things have to move quickly. Otherwise, everyone gets a, a little bit tired. So I, I could see Zende encouraging it and then being very supportive as a father, especially someone who grew up with his background, having been an orphan, being adopted into this family, essentially getting a golden ticket and an ability to start a wonderful life in Los Angeles, being raised and, and given essentially unlimited opportunity. I think he would pass that on to the next generation. So I think as a father, then they would definitely stand up. It's It all just gets a little messy given the circumstances. But again, this is a soap opera. Great. Now, speaking of his family, uh, are you hopeful that we'll finally get to see Zendaya's parents? I, I would like it. I know the fans have been asking for it. I would like it. Zende would like it. Zende needs some support. If it's, I don't know what will happen. But let's yeah. say the news breaks out. It's hard to imagine a scenario where it isn't Zende versus the world. And it would be nice to have some support from the family. It's it's Zende is in a really tough spot right now. It's a hard, even as I hypothesize as an actor, I'm very curious what the writers will give, which always makes the job interesting, right? You don't yeah, know yeah. where it's going to go. But you you can see easily a playing field where Zende is one versus 20. So we'll we'll see. Some family support would would be would be nice. Then it would create intergenerational conflict, which soaps should thrive off of. Yeah, the the yeah. feud the feud could continue definitely. Yeah. Uh, now you mentioned uh, working with uh, John McCook. Mm -hmm. Did he ever give you know give you any tips or because he's you know a soap legend? The th first thing that he said to me was that we read the scene essentially three times, and that we don't really comment on each other's work. I will say that I have been mentored a little bit here and there by Torsten, which I definitely appreciate. When I run scenes with Torsten, we will really talk through what we're trying to achieve, the different beats. I think the pacing of things, and he's really great at, at keeping the pace at sort of a moderate slow burn. And I think I have a tendency to want to really go. I'm, I have a, a battery in me. And so it's fun to work through those scenes with him. John gave me, I think, the structure of how you work within the medium. But Torsen, he'll come in and, and help refine things through the day. So it's it's really, it's nice working with him. And I love scenes with both of them. And I loved when I got to go off and get heated with both Uncle Ridge and RJ, I, I love that. I would love more of that. And let's say if, if the if the news comes out, if this if the story leaks internally at the firm, I don't see where we don't have more of that. So as an actor, I'd say, yeah, rip off the bandaid. Let's go. Let me have some more fireworks. Perfect. And how familiar were you with B and B or the soap world uh, before joining the show? I knew it since I was a kid. This was on when you were sick from school. This was what was on. You watched The Price Is Right, and then the soaps were on. My mom watched the show for. God knows how long, 30 years, 35 years, and then picked it back up. Obviously, when I started, she was so excited. And it was New York. This is just, it was a thing in New York. Everyone knew Bold and Beautiful. Every It was just on television. Everyone, you had a couple TVs on in the house. One TV is probably playing soaps in the middle of the afternoon if you're in school or not. So it, it, it was definitely known to me. Ridge and Brooke as characters were known to me and then definitely known to my family, my mom and even my father. I mean, they both completely freaked out when I booked the role. Awesome. And you booked it during, it was a very interesting time. My audition was a, a, a <laughs> self-tape. It was a laptop hey. self-tape. I couldn't get a reader to come over and read with me. I literally, yeah. as an actress I worked with before Gracie on a CBS show called Zoo, I said, I need some help, please. Can you read with me on this? We over laptops as we're doing now we recorded and then i sent 
in the laptop recording. And then they had me chemistry read with Kiara and a couple yeah. rounds of, of uh, first a read with casting and then a chemistry read. It was crazy. But the world has changed now. I, I don't know if we'll ever go back to the old way. That specifically, though, was odd because at least under normal circumstances, you can get a friend to come over to your place and read. But that was that was challenging. I'm glad it worked out, though. Yeah, I know for sure. But it like and getting on set with all the, you know, COVID protocols. It was, how how do you form chemistry with someone when you're acting 10 feet across from them? It wasn't even the six foot. It was, I think, nine, 10 feet when we started. So I'm across from Kiara on stage. We're trying to have this heavy romantic moment together. And that is a real acting challenge. When you have proximity, things naturally start to bubble up. And on camera, you feel it. For them, I, I, I mean, the editors, can you imagine the editing trying to make that look like we're standing right next to each other? All of that was so crazy. My first kiss with Diamond, with Paris, I was kissing a mannequin. When you think, I, you almost, I almost took it for granted. But when I think back on that year, year and a half of really, hey, we got to be careful. It was crazy, crazy what we had to go through. But when uh, we... Now you started around the same time as uh, Tanner did. Place yeah. in. You both bond about being, you know, the new kids on the block. And I think Tanner was the first person I spoke with because I knew Tanner prior to the show. We used to audition against each other. I think I booked a, an NCIS guest star over him. Ha ha, gotcha, man, if you ever watch this. <laughs> But we, we've read for similar things in the past, which is odd because we don't really look like each other, but we were in similar categories. I would see him around town. And when the casting news came out and I saw that he booked, I was like, hold on, this is cool. Him, he got it too? Yeah. And we, we jumped on the phone. He started, I think, a little bit before me. And he said the amount of material is real. It's serious. I think, though, there's something called soap opera brain in the industry. I remember early on, I was auditioning for something when I first moved to LA. I think it was maybe an MTV film. And they wanted me to read for a different part, gave me the sides to go outside, come back in and read for the director. And I thought, oh, I got to do this quickly. So five minutes, I come back in, I'm off book. And they had asked if I had been on a soap opera before. And I said, no, why? And they said, well, you picked up the line so quickly. And I think maybe from my educational background, I had a little bit of an advantage because I, I was never, when I started, it was a lot, but I was never overwhelmed by the amount of material. And then I think the brain changes and now I, I can look at this stuff and it's it's a lot easier to soak up. I think the brain becomes a little bit more like a sponge with the with the material, with the text. Awesome. You grew up watching the show. You're familiar with the cast and characters. Is there any actor or character that you're hoping Zenday works with a little more that you work with a little more down the line? I think Jackie is such a fantastic actress I'd love to have some some heated scenes with her. Our stuff has been pretty light. Oh, hey, Zenday, what's up with the fabric order? I'd love to have some drama with her. I think Annika is great. I'd love some drama with her. I I love Sheila. Sheila as a character. I mean, who doesn't love Sheila as a character? Something there. Zenday, I know, I'd love for Zenday to kill somebody. I'm not. I think that'd be fun. I like I like Zenday even. Zende, the thing is, everyone knows Zende's bad now. Zende, he broke bad. I don't know. Zende was kind of sidelined. This kid comes in, takes his job. He's yeah. not so happy about it. And happens to like his girlfriend and not like RJ. So maybe he's a little devilish a little bit now, but he's not a real villain. I think it's cool to play bad. The roles okay. I play that are a little bit, they that tilt that way. As an actor, it's a really, really fun experience. So... Oh. I know those those are some of the some of the actors I would like to work with. Let me think, Bill. I, there's been nothing with Dollar Bill with Zenday. There's been nothing with Dollar Bill. There's been nothing with Sheila. There's been a little bit with Hope, but I think you could have more. And then Steffi is his cousin. I think that Steffi, uh, there, there might be. Let's see. Let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Awesome. I don't know what the writers are thinking, but these those are some of the characters that I would like to interact more with. That's great. Uh, a lot to look forward to and uh, best of luck. Uh, can't wait to see how this plays out if uh, some of the theories we discuss come true.